What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. It's been a little bit since we did a studio show with everything going on with spring football and spring break and baseball NCAA tournament or SEC tournament at the time uh, that I kind of did everything on a walk and talk basis. But back in the studio today and got plenty of stuff to cover and we're going to get to the truth on Arkansas basketball. There's been a lot of stuff going around on that. If you've been on the Razor's Edge, you've been following everything that we've been saying. Spring football starting up again on Tuesday. Talk a little bit about baseball as well. All that and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. Plenty of ways to watch and listen to the show. You can always tune in on YouTube where we are streaming live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't, or subscribe to the page, I guess, if you haven't done so, and set it to you where you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Facebook Live. Follow the page there where we have 90,000 Razorback fans following us. Uh, Apple Podcasts, we'd love to have a five-star review from you if you haven't taken time to do that. Uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month at hawgsports.com com and 30 percent off if you want to sign up for an annual subscription it's a great time to do so with so much going on with the transfer portal and so many rumors to confirm or shut down spring football going on and of course we're back on the quiet period for recruiting and there's visitors coming in and stuff we're gonna have danny west at the back end of the show to talk a little bit about the latest in arkansas recruiting so for me personally I uh, just got back from spring break. I got an 11-year-old daughter, so we do things like that. Uh, took her skiing, hurt my shoulder a little bit. I got to be honest with you, the medicine that I'm, I'm not, I don't react well to medicine, <laughs> any kind of medicine. And uh, got my shoulder a little bit, rotator cuff coming off the lift. And uh, this medicine makes me a little jittery. So if I start going, blah, 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 then uh, that's just, that's the medicine talking. But uh, I'm doing okay, getting a little bit better on the shoulder had a good time went to crest of butte still interacting on the message board obviously that's probably why you haven't seen me address a lot of stuff out here on youtube or social media or anything like that because i just kind of kept everything focused on our vip message board the razor's edge before we get into everything we're going to talk uh, just go over a little uh, schedule standard stuff we're going to talk a little bit of baseball obviously arkansas uh, went in two of the three games at auburn snapped their 15 game winning streak with an eight six loss uh, to the Tigers, Arkansas overall is 19 and three now, number one in the country at last check. And Hagen Smith named SEC Co-Pitcher of the Week again, second time he's been named uh, Pitcher SEC Pitcher of the Week. He had in the 1-0 win on Thursday, he allowed three hits, two walks, 12 strikeouts on 87 pitches, 56 of which were strikes. His fourth victory of the year. SEC, or excuse me, NCAA tournament is obviously going on. Ten SEC schools invited to the NCAA tournament. Two remain. Two left in the Sweet 16. It was a bad first round and uh, second round, I guess. All you've got is Alabama, who plays North Carolina on Thursday. That is at 8.39 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Alabama is plus three and a half on the Bet Saracen app. If you want to bet on any of the NCAA tournament games and stuff, then uh, there's just one way to do it in Arkansas. You use, um, you got to use in-state services like Bet Saracen, which is the leader. So, and Tennessee faces Creighton at 9:09 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Friday. Tennessee is favored by two and a half points on the Bet Saracen app. Yep. I mean, there's all kinds of other bets on there. I was looking like they've got all kinds of prop bets, player bets. You know, you can bet the over-under, obviously. You can bet the money line. A lot of different ways to do it on Bet Saracen. So, a lot of rumors going on with Eric Musselman in Arkansas. And, you know, I've always been told, like, if there was the right West Coast job opening up, then maybe that would be something that Musselman would consider. But, I mean, guys, I've got – I've been doing this for 21 years, and I've developed a lot of sources, okay? A lot of sources outside the program, inside the program, you know, basically on every level. I'm not going to, like, talk about it, but every level that you can think of that impacts the program, okay? Football, basketball, all that. Um, and this whole time when all this stuff's going on, Musselman, you know, Musselman uh, is in Chicago talking to DePaul, Eric Musselman hadn't been to Chicago in 20 years. 
and it's it's just, some of this stuff is just ludicrous, like the SMU stuff. You know, I'm sure yes, there was some interest from SMU. Yes, I do believe that. Uh, as far as like stuff being reported out there that like he's been offered the job and all this stuff, just guys. I mean, stuff like rumors like that just hurt the program. I mean, same thing like with the love triangle, all that BS that people were putting out there. Um, it just it just negatively impacts the program. And like some people, I've like seen people say stuff like, you know, Arkansas's got to address this. They need to put something out. Like they're not going to address salacious rumors like that. They're not going to address every coaching search you know, whatever that comes out. And, you know, coaches are out on the road. Ruta, Anthony Ruta's out on the road. Eric Musselman's been out on the road. Um, you know, and it doesn't do any good to, like, have to address, like, that he's going to SM freaking you. Like, no disrespect to SMU. He's not going to SMU, okay? Um, you know, and, and then all the talk about Louisville and stuff like that that's also been going around. I'm not saying that Musselman won't eventually leave. You know, no coach stays anywhere forever. Uh, but everything that I've been able to gather, like, Nobody could put Eric Musselman in Dallas at SMU. Like, and I'm talking like seven different people telling me this. Um, so we've been putting that out, and Connor Goodson has done a great job also, does our main basketball stuff at Hog Sports about uh, making sure that the information is, is accurate and, and right on that regard. Again, I'm not saying the dominoes can't fall a certain way and a certain job opens up that he's not interested in, right? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like the stuff that's been out there right now just – you know, like the DePaul one was in the SMU one. I mean, it's like, anyway, I just want to set the record straight on, on that kind of stuff. And if you've been on the Razor's Edge, you've been on Hog Sports, and you've been following along and getting good information on that. So Arkansas's basketball roster right now, which you've got six who ran out of eligibility. I believe that's right. Five portal entries from Arkansas. Six that are currently – returning so that leaves seven more to get right when you've got you know the guy I say six returning but you've got you know the incoming recruits and all that stuff so including incoming recruits you've got seven spots left to get so let's see who do they want <laughs> that's the big question right um so, Connor Goodson, again, has done a great job keeping up with everything on the Arkansas basketball transfer portal live tracker. He's got them contacting like 42, 43 different players. Keeps up with everything about who's, you know, maybe Arkansas has contacted that is committed elsewhere. All of those types of things. And that's a free article. You can go check it out at Hog Sports. Uh, we do know that Josh Cohen is scheduled to be in Fayetteville on an official visit this coming week. Um, that's the Ford out of, out of UMass. Let's see, let's look at his numbers real quick. So Josh is 6'10", 220. He's originally from New Jersey. Last season, he averaged 15.9 points per game, 6.8 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 0.9 steals. Uh, he is not like just like an explosive above the rim type of player. He's got a nice touch, got a nice shot, averaged 34.4% from three point range. Pretty good for 6'10, 220 post player. Um, yeah, so that's a guy to obviously keep an eye on. I have not been able to find anybody else right now that they, um, that they're bringing in. Uh, obviously, they're going to, but we do know that obviously, you know, they're looking for big men, obviously. Uh, Cohen, 6'10, 240. 220. Uh, there's been some talk about Malik Dia uh, having been visited by Arkansas. Uh, he's out of Belmont. He was formerly at Vanderbilt before that. 16.9 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 1.2 assists. So maybe that's another guy to obviously keep an eye on. Tyron Lawrence, who is at Vanderbilt, is obviously entered the transfer portal out of Monticello, Georgia. 13.8 points, 5.1 rebounds. Um, 27.2% from three-point range, and I will say this, and obviously they've got a lot of guys to get, but what I have – one of the things that I've been told, obviously that, you know, they're after bigs. Uh, they, they're, you know, going to lose a lot, obviously, this year. Uh, but they want a guy who's like an ace three-point shooter. Like, you know, hopefully to go with Caleb Battle. That would be nice. But they want an ace three-point shooter. So I'm going through. I'm looking at Connor's list and all the guys that they've contacted and stuff. And, you know, who's just like elite three-point shooter. Maybe not just necessarily like rank super high or something like that, but just period 
because I also know they want an elite point guard. But, like, just looking at this first category, who's an elite three-point shooter? Um, you come across a guy like Deshane, Deshane Montgomery out of Mount St. Mary's who shot 41.2% last year, uh, took a little over a couple of game. Um, Colby Rogers out of Wichita State shot 40.9% from three-point range. These are both two guards, off guards. Uh, Jacoby Gillespie out of Belmont. Obviously, there's the connection with D.I. there who, you know, there's been a lot of talk with him. Uh, shot almost 39% from three-point range. And Arkansas brought in a lot of guys last year who were good three-point shooters on paper, like, you know, 30-something percent, something like that. But, like, the guys who are just, like, buckets, guys that are shooting 40% plus, um, you know, didn't really see a lot of those. And, and Battle, you know, is, a, is an extremely <laughs> good three-point shooter, obviously. Um, you know, and he shot a lot of, like, deep threes and stuff. But he wasn't even, you know, a 40% guy. But, like, just looking at a couple of guys that are, you know, in that kind of range. I Also, I look at guys from, you know, inside the state. And you've got Kylan Milton out of UAPB who averaged, what, 17 points a game last year, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 6'4", 192 guard. Uh, Cameron Hunter out of UCA who is a junior, 6'3", 200, who averaged uh, almost 17 a game, 16.9 points a game last year. You know, those are kind of guys that, you know, you obviously look at guys from in-state schools that, you know, might be intriguing to Arkansas. And then, as I mentioned, you've got guys like, um, you know, that you, I, I know that they want like an elite point guard, and you guys would say that, you know, obviously after last year, <laughs> after this past season. Um, you know, Kobe Johnson, I don't know that we have a report that they have contacted him. He's out of USC, uh, but he's number three transfer portal player in the country. Kanan Carlisle out of Stanford, there's been a lot of talk about him. Uh, number four transfer portal player in the country. And, you know, for point guard, like I'm just going through, like, you know, obviously no, they want a 3.8, A. so who are the best – you know, percentage three-point shooter. So I just kind of looked through that. And then, you know, obviously they want an elite point guard. So who are the top-ranked point guards out there? Uh, Doug McDaniel out of Michigan. I don't remember seeing any kind of um, information there. I think J.P. Peggy, Peggy's out of uh, Furman was on the list of people that, that Arkansas had, transfer, uh, had contacted, a number 12 transfer portal player in the country. So Vinsley Joseph – out of uh, Miami, number 19 transfer portal player. I don't remember seeing his name on there of guys that they had contacted. Corin Johnson out of Washington, combo guard, 23 transfer portal player in the country. So, anyway, just a few guys out there that Arkansas might be looking at. They're still recruiting guys in the class of 2025, of course. Um, building for the future, you wouldn't know it. You'd think, you know, uh, obviously, like, all these jobs are coming up, they're leaving, but they seem very active. As I mentioned, uh, Anthony Ruda, uh, Eric Musselman have both been out on the road recruiting. Um, you know, they're bringing in uh, uh, Josh Cohen out of the uh, to visit this week out of the transfer portal. They'll be bringing in other guys. We mentioned the guys that they've been contacting. These are all things that coaches do. Obviously, you know, even if you're, you, you were leaving, you know, you'd be doing stuff like this. But, um, man – a lot of things that they're doing seems like things that you would be doing if you were uh, planning on being around at Arkansas. So uh, what one source tells me is that either Eric Musselman is just trying to fool everybody or he's signing an extension with Arkansas. Uh, if you guys want to put a timetable on last time he signed an extension, which, by the way, made him top ten money uh, in the country, uh, that was April 14th a couple of years ago. So, you know. Just because it's March 25th and he hasn't signed anything doesn't mean he's not going to. Again, that was April 14th, the last contract that he signed, his, which was his second, which made him top 10 money. Um, Sadiq White Jr. is a name that popped up a little bit before the show came out. He is named a top seven. He is out of North Carolina. He's the number one prospect in North Carolina, and there's not a North Carolina school on this list. LSU, Alabama, Arkansas, Syracuse, Georgetown, Texas – and Tennessee are the schools to watch there for Sadiq White Jr. He is the number 25 overall prospect in the country in the class of 2025, number six power forward, number one, again, in North Carolina. So still recruiting for the future, still recruiting for next year and beyond uh, at Arkansas. So, you know, guys, I like uh, – when all those like, I mean, you got to battle those kinds of things in recruiting, like that you might be leaving, or um, you know, when all that stuff like again, like love triangle, or um, you know, this player, 
Like, what about all the stuff that came out about uh, Caleb Battle, again, right before he started going off on people that he had dog-cussed Musselman and stormed off the court and was suspended indefinitely? Like, think about all the ridiculous rumors that came out this year. And none of it's helping Arkansas basketball. I've given my take on Eric Musselman before. Uh, I just think the guy's a stud. I think he's crazy in a good way. Um, he checks all the boxes, and he had a crappy year this year, and that happens sometimes. I would be stunned if he comes back, which, again, I fully believe he's going to unless the dominoes fall some kind of way and things change, which is possible. That kind of stuff happens. Job opens up you didn't know about. There was talk about Mick Cronin maybe being a possibility um, to wind up, I think, it was it Louisville? Which, I mean, I think that's changed – just recently also but you know like if the UCLA job opened up or something maybe that would make you go okay well maybe that's something to keep an eye on um but there's jobs like that everywhere you know if Kentucky opened up you know everybody who has a good coach is going to be like oh you know um so that's just the nature of the business and you keep your options open and stuff but everything that I've learned is that Musselman is planning on being back at Arkansas next year and I think that's obvious through all the stuff that we just talked about, the efforts that they're doing in recruiting. Um, again, like even the stuff about, um, you know, I was talking to Connor, and there was a talk about, you know, somebody meeting with uh, Musselman's agent, who, by the way, is not his agent anymore and works at Fox Sports, and Musselman hasn't had representation. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing some of the stuff that comes out. All right, I think we covered pretty much what I wanted to cover on Arkansas basketball. Again, if you'd been on the razor's edge following everything, then just saying, dollar right now for the first month. Come check us out. What do you got to lose for one dollar at Hog Sports? And plus, you're going to get all of our spring coverage. And we just capped off spring break. The last practice I watched Arkansas hold was live tackle. It was glorious to watch. We haven't watched a full live tackle practice, I don't think, since Pittman's been here, aside from like the red white game. So, if you got some questions, get them in. I'm going to go over to the Razor's Edge because I know they got some questions for us there. But uh, just to go over the schedule real quick, today is Monday, the 25th of March, and you've got practice resuming at 8.25 a.m. on Tuesday, the 26th. It's a little wet outside, so I could see it being inside. Um, and then you go – You're gonna, so you're going to go – and I outlined this a while back, but you're going to go – Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for the next three weeks. Except for that last week, you'll go Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That way they get all 15 in. So you got practice on the 26th, the 28th, and then thir the 30th on Saturday is practice eight. Now, that's a 9 o'clock practice. That practice is going to be a scrimmage. It's going to be open to the media, so you can go and get a you know get a look for yourself at everything that we've been reporting on. So Saturday, March thirtieth, nine o'clock practice with a scrimmage open to the public. Okay, then they're going to come back on Tuesday, then uh, April second, and that is an eight twenty-five a.m. practice. Again, these weekday practices aren't open to the public. And then it's Thursday for 825, that's practice 10. And then Saturday, practice 11 at 1025 a.m. You can also go to this game, or scrimmage, excuse me. Uh, it'll be inside the stadium, uh, ideally if the, the weather's permitting, I should say that. Like So the 30th and the 6th, if weather permitting, you'll be able to go watch practice live, scrimmage style. All right, and then they've got um, practice 12 is Tuesday the 9th at 8.25 a.m. And then practice 13 is at 8.25 a.m. on the 11th. And they follow that up on the 12th with a practice on the 14th. That is, I guess, going to be maybe kind of a walkthrough. There's no media availability for us on that Friday practice. So that'll be close to the public, close to the media. And then the 13th, Saturday, spring game at noon, the red-white game. So that's the schedule coming up for football. Um, they're going to have visitors in. We're going to talk to Danny West here in just a second and uh, kind of go over some of the things there. And after I get done with Danny, I'm going to go over some questions, and we'll see where that takes us. All right? Okay. Sounds good. Great. Medicine's kicking in. All right, for those of you who don't follow Danny, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7. He's the Hog Sports recruiting analyst and has been with us doing this deal for 
so long. I can't even, I don't even remember like the exact date that Danny started because he kind of, he was on our message board for a number of years and then just kind of integrated over, started covering baseball. And the next thing he's doing is covering football. Danny, how many years have you actually been under the employee of Hog Sports? What is the number? Because oh. I always say like over a dozen years and I don't know what it is exactly. Yeah, I think it was 2011. Trey. 2011 okay yeah so, I so think 13 years 13th yeah yeah it, you know it's different because i i count the cycles i count the classes as opposed to yeah um you know the actual calendar year but mm-hmm. yeah i think that's where we're at right now yeah i mean i, I think about some of the like anniversaries that i've had uh, by the way this month marks the 21st year that i've been with hog wow. sports um and but i you know i talk with randy rainwater sometimes and i'm like how long have i been doing this show and i remember like talking to him uh and i'd been doing it a while but i remember talking to him about hey i'm about to go cover mitch mustaine's uh, press conference and mm-hmm. so that would have been in 2005 because they were class of t- uh, 2006 uh, so i mean i've been doing that yeah. for i mean 18 19 years or something i mean that's right i know i joined as a paying member i mm-hmm. joined your site in october of 2004 so yeah this will be my 20th year as you know on the board anyway yeah yeah we could certainly use another that's another crazy. danny west <laughs> give me five <laughs> well, danny I'm west done. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> don't put that pressure on me I'm done. <laughs> so danny obviously we're in a quiet period right now which means on-campus visitation between coaches and recruits what uh what's the latest what's going on yeah i just actually uh i've been filing out a few more today uh coincidentally from california of all places just added three more visitors for this week mm-hmm. all from the uh you know, the great west out there we'll talk about dre garner first he's a composite four star 2025 prospect he's the kid trey that if you'll remember he came with tay lockett the 2026 arkansas commit came mm-hmm. out to fayetteville last spring for the spring game i want to say and now he's going to be back on the campus this weekend um, like I said, composite four star. We've got him as a three star, but he's right there. He's out of San Diego Lincoln High School, and uh, he's got offers from Colorado, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, pretty good places for a wide receiver target. Yep. Also added La Mason Waller. He's Thursday through Saturday. This is a 2025, again, composite four star. I know people are tired of hearing that, but that's pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Alabama, Colorado, Florida State, Georgia, Arkansas has offered Waller, uh, Michigan, OU, Oregon, A and M, big time offer list there. Six two one seventy. He's a, uh, uh, like I said, a wide receiver out of California. We uh, actually offered, uh, uh, offered. We actually added Joshua Holland to the list. 2026 mm-hmm. he has yet to be offered by arkansas but he's got usc oklahoma washington Ole miss he's a kid out of st john bosco 2026 athlete 6'2, 175 so there are three right there studs from california coming in this week and mm-hmm. uh I actually just added a kid by the name of lebron bauer on saturday uh cornerback 2026 corner out of Allen, Texas. That's LeBron Bauer. Uh, LeBron's told me he's he's been trying to get here for over a year. I actually went back and looked at our messages earlier today, and I've been talking to this kid for over a year about mm-hmm. him trying to get to Arkansas. So he's got Texas Tech, Houston, Arizona State, I think, is on his list. So a few early ones there for the 2026 corner. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I can keep going. We've got quite a list built as you've been away a little bit, it's been stacking up a little bit on Hawk Sports. So, yeah. uh, quite a few for uh, Saturday. They will have some in on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for tomorrow's practice, I probably should have started there. But Aiden Anding is a uh, 2025 three-star cornerback out of Ruston, mm-hmm. Louisiana, 5'11", 165, number 52 cornerback nationally, which is pretty solid, actually. That, that puts you in striking distance at some point to eventually move up but he's got arkansas uh, baylor ole miss miami tcu really nice offer list for aiden and again he's a 2025 so maybe pay a little more close attention to this one um a multi-sport athlete i think he runs track plays basketball just went to the under armor camp in uh, dallas two weeks ago 
and won the MVP for defensive back. So mm-hmm. he's on his way up. And um, so if you look around at practice tomorrow, Trey, you might see Anding out there, 5'11", 165. And, you know, that's an area that we don't talk a whole lot about, not just Louisiana. I know things have, have gone a little bit quiet there for Arkansas, you know, over the last four or five years, but especially that northern half of Louisiana. We never talk about guys from there anymore. I think yeah. Dave, Dave Young Warren might have been the last one about 2017. Uh, yeah, I think that's right, 2017 for Dave Young. Yeah. Uh, he was and, out of Monroe. And just for those – watching and listening right now i'm going to i'm going to talk a little bit of nil stuff and we'll talk about the truth of arkansas nil so we got a lot of <laughs> you put the truth of arkansas basketball as your headline you get a lot of <laughs> a lot of people watching <laughs> but we're going to talk the truth of arkansas nil too here in a little bit when i'm done with danny but danny how difficult is it now and i was talking with chris bauer uh before i left for spring break and uh, who's the executive director of arkansas edge and he was t- he telling me that like you know the discussion with recruits always turns to nil you know and they can't they can't offer nil deals what they can do is like point to like sure. player in a similar position say that like this is what we were able to do for this guy and that guy um you know even though the ncaa is like we're not, we're not doing anything like they're still obviously very cautious because <laughs> um but anyway um trey i gotta how, interrupt you real quick i yeah. hate to do it go carius kern has mm-hmm. just decommitted from arkansas really yeah I can uh, I can read this. Go for it if you'd like. But this is from Carius Kern, uh, who just tweeted at three nineteen. Uh, quote: I have decided to decommit from the University of Arkansas. I have the utmost respect for the coaching staff and appreciate their hard work during my recruitment. I hope that everyone will respect my decision as I attempt to do what is best for me and my family. Uh, end quote. So that's Carius Kern. That's a big one. Four star. I call him a defensive tackle. He's a two-way lineman out of Marion, Arkansas, for the class of 2025, and um, evidently off the commitment list. So that one's going to sting them. I think they had dropped down to 30th with Carius, and uh, this probably puts you back below 35. So not ideal, Trey. Anyway, what were you saying about NIL? <laughs> I thought he was 110% committed, Danny. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a tough one there. That's a tough one. Yeah, uh, this guy's a stud yeah, and he's a certified stud. Uh, uh, make and, no mistake about it. I think he's top one hundred, and I've said that on multiple. Well, this state doesn't produce. Now, but, name a defensive tackle this state produced. Yeah, you know, it's been a while. Sosa, if you want to call him DT, uh, that was twenty sixteen. Haven't seen many. That's the point. And. That's a, uh, so even loss. Sosa was like, you know, defensive end listed out of high school, like sure. as a guy that's like listed. Um, Bijan. Yeah. But, you know, but like four star, you know, like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. This just came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, but that's the, yeah. in the age we live in. I mean, it all like NIL is the number one topic. It, NIL is the number one thing. And so, um, and maybe they can bring him in, like Braylon Russell committed to Arkansas very early, and he's on campus right now, you know, and he he did committed from Arkansas. So it doesn't mean it's just over. Does he say anything in here about uh, about still considering Arkansas? I don't see no, anything was, at all. That was the full quote, but I, yeah. I would imagine they're going to keep working on him. There's and no you doubt. Know, you know what's crazy about how this kind of came out of nowhere when he committed. You know, I, I remember mm-hmm. he took a trip to Ole Miss – and uh, I want to say the very next weekend, maybe two weeks later, he went to Arkansas. And, and uh, that visit, from what I was told, that visit went way better than the one he had just taken at Ole Miss. I'm not sure what happened at Oxford or, or that anything happened at all. But my understanding was once he got to Fayetteville, it was like, okay, uh, this is way different. This is home. Let's go ahead and lock it in. And so yeah. here we are, um, I don't know, uh, over – a month later, almost two months later, I want to say February 7th was his commitment day, and here we are on the 25th of March, and he's off the commitment list. Yep. All right, Danny. Well, Sorry to derail everything, so i, I got to get on this story, I Yeah, guess. I'll let you go because I can you put out the newsletter. If you haven't signed up for the yeah, Hog Sports it. newsletter, you should. If you haven't signed up for Hog Sports text alerts, then you should, and Danny's going to be sending all those out right now. So. Yep. All right, brother. All right, I got it. Yep. All right, later.
Well, that sucks. That's not good news. I mean, Carrius Kearns is stud. Like, there's no good way to <laughs> to talk about this other than this really stinks for Arkansas. Uh, again, Braylon Russell decommitted from Arkansas last year and recommitted. We've seen other guys. Uh, Landon Rogers is another example of a guy that uh, decommitted for a little bit and then came back into the fold. So we see this happen every once in a while, and guys still come back. Obviously, he's an in-state kid, so that matters. But um, hopefully they can uh, – for Arkansas, they can get that worked out and – and figured out uh, back on the NIL discussion it always comes back to NIL I mean like the timing of that and I'm not saying like that's why he decommitted maybe he's not comfortable with something I don't know I haven't talked to Carius obviously this just happened uh, but you know talking with Chris Bauer again ex executive director over at Arkansas Edge um, you know the the conversation in recruiting always comes back to that it used to always be like facilities and playing time and things like that and those are important but eventually you're going to get to NIL talk um, what I know of Arkansas Edge is that uh, they have about – so there's different ways to donate to Arkansas Edge. And there's – and maybe this will clear the air for some people that, that maybe don't understand it. And, and I know people are frustrated and people don't like the way that college football is going, but this is the game that we're in. And if Arkansas is ever going to be competitive, then the fans, if the fans and boosters are largely responsible in a lot of ways, and corporations too. So corporations obviously uh, become members of, of Arkansas Edge uh, sponsors, I guess. Uh, they also have charitable, charitable organizations that um, are, are part of it, and that's where a lot of things go with Arkansas Edge. Um, there are ways for fans to donate. They can do tax-deductible donations, which basically go to the charity, and the charity you know, basically then in some kind of way – pays the athlete to do different engagements with the charity. So that's kind of how that works, those tax-deductible donations. And then there's uh, ways that uh, fans can uh, become members of Arkansas Edge. Uh, I don't know what they call it exactly, but it's like a fan membership where they get certain things uh, for being members. They have different levels and stuff. Uh, but what I know that they're trying to do, and again, this is just started up a couple of months ago, um, and the way Chris tells me, like, to – that they look at it as a kind of a startup because um, shifting away from one Arkansas to Arkansas edge, um, you know, and I don't want to get off topic yet, but there's a lot of things to discuss on that, but um, they want to get to 5,000 people as part of their fan membership deal who are donating $50 a month or more right now at last check. Anyway, they're at about 500, and again, it's just starting out. The plan to get is to get to 5,000, I think, by the end of the summer. Now, there are other organizations out there like uh, the Grove Collective. It's probably at about 7,000 right now, fans that are donating at least $50 a month. You get to 5,000 fans donating $50 a month, that's like $3 million. Again, that's not where all the money comes from. There's corporate sponsors that are obviously putting in money. There's uh, tax-deductible donations. There's people that have just given one time, you know, things like that. Uh, but right now they're at like 500. I think they've got some big thing coming out uh, around the spring game. You're starting to see more, uh, a bigger push from them as far as, I think they they either just hired somebody or about to hire somebody uh, also. Uh, but it, until now it's been a two-man show there. Well, two-person show, um, a man and a woman have <laughs> been working there. But I think they're about to hire somebody else. And um, so, anyway, that's kind of where Arkansas Edge is. Um NIL is a big part of college sports now. It just it just is the way it is. Transfer portal and NIL, um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of the the situation with Arkansas Edge. And you know, they do things a little bit differently. Like from what I gathered, talking to him and and talking to others, like NIL NIL collectives are more worried now <laughs> in a lot of ways about the IRS than they are about the NCAA. Not that the NCAA isn't, you know, something that they want to be compliant with also, but um, the IRS. And that's one reason I think you saw the transition from one Arkansas and how it's set up as a 501c3 and, and all that stuff. Um, but the shift from that to Arkansas Edge, which is run by Blueprint Sports, which is an outside organization, they do a lot of different ones. Penn State is one that, that is under Blueprint. Uh, but that's a big thing. Like, when the IRS comes snooping around, they want to make sure that they're compliant. And there's going to be a lot of schools out there 
that are going to find out that, you know, maybe the hard way that they're not because the last thing you want to do is like have to pay all that money <laughs> back, which is what would happen. So um, that's been a big focus, I think, with a lot of uh, collectives recently and shifting to that to make sure that they're uh, compliant. And there was, you know, there was a bit of a, a hiccup with the transition, just like you would expect with anything where, uh, you know, players you know, maybe weren't getting paid on the same schedule that they thought. I think in the past, like Arkansas operated on a 10-month payment schedule. There are schools that do six months, schools that do 12 months, just different types of uh, scheduled payouts. But uh, Arkansas Edge does theirs after the event has been accomplished. They use a an app called Base Path, I think is what it's called. But it keeps up with everything, like everything that they're responsible for doing, uh, everything that they've done, their direct deposits, all that kind of stuff is 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 – um, done through this app called base path and um, but that's when you know athletes are paid at Arkansas now after the event's done like it, it, there's no more of this like somebody's gonna you know tweet something for a business and barely fulfill the obligations that they have and get like a check for fifty thousand dollars you know and just basically a money laundering deal or something that's not what that's not what these collectives are uh, going to have to go for for because again we're not talking like NCAA we're talking we're talking IRS type stuff so it's going to be everything documented very well um, and basically paid after the event has been completed so that's kind of how they will structure things uh, from another source that I've spoken to uh, you know obviously a, a, a couple of sources I know you know there's a player on Arkansas that's getting you know position player that's getting like 350,000 uh, there's another player that's getting 400,000 you know and I, I'm not sure like what the quarterback's getting Taylor Green but we know what quarterback talk has been million bucks stuff like that um, but from what I've t been told from one source is like basically Basically, like scholarship players at Arkansas are earning somewhere around 40 grand, you know, bottom, at least 40 grand. Like if you're an in-state walk-on, um, maybe something like 15 grand. And, you know, obviously that helps supplement a lot for, um, you know, your scholarship and stuff. So um, I, I know one story of a recruit at Arkansas last year, not a recruit at Arkansas, a player at Arkansas who entered the transfer portal and visited another Power 5 school outside the SEC. And this guy was a backup, not even a starter, uh, who was making around – I don't know if I can say the number, actually. I don't want to burn anybody. But um, the, the amount of money that he was making was twice as much as any player on their team at that position group was making twice as much, and he was a backup at Arkansas. There is a narrative out there that Arkansas is, you know, dramatically behind in NIL. They're not paying players enough and all this stuff. But, like, the deals that they make with players are pretty good. I mean, I just mentioned a couple of them. And I would, I would ask, like, do you go out and get Fernando Carmona? You know, Fernando Carmona was going to visit Auburn after Arkansas. And he's a big-time offensive lineman. When he called Auburn to tell him that, hey, I'm not coming – I mean, they're like begging him, calling him, blowing up his phone. No, come visit. You don't want to go to Arkansas, all this stuff. Do you think Fernando Carmona was going to turn down like significantly more money at Auburn just to go to Arkansas? You think Jalen Braxton's sticking at Arkansas for pennies? What about Landon Jackson? You think they got Selman Bridges, who was, you know, a big-time recruit, Charleston Collins? You know, you think they got those guys just on, yeah, I want to go to Arkansas just because of that? No, they didn't. Um, so, yes, they have some work to do in NIL, okay? Uh, the transition to Arkansas Edge is the right transition, I think. It's, I think it's the right transition uh, versus what they had at one Arkansas. I know it is. But also know, like, it's been a transition. And with that, you get, you know, hiccups and, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done. But it feels like from everything, you know, from talking to Chris, from talking to other people, um, you know, on – a couple of different levels, uh, it feels like things are starting to get, you know, not starting to get, but are on the right path as far as that goes. What they need really is, um, you know, to compete with other people. Like, you can't tell me that, and, and Ole Miss has been winning, I get it, but like, you know, when you look at Arkansas compared to Ole Miss, um, you know, as far as like the people in Arkansas not having to split the state between two schools, 
um, you know, all those types of things. You know, the endowment at the University of Arkansas is like, what, twice what Ole Miss is. I mean, you can't tell me that Arkansas can't get to a level close to that. But the difference is Ole Miss has been winning. And that's that's obviously a big deal and one reason that they have so much support. Uh, but Arkansas, I think, can reach their goal probably of 5,000 people. And eventually, you know, they plan to build on that. So, uh, you know, as far as Musselman and basketball, you know, I, I've heard stuff like, uh, you know, maybe the NIL isn't what it was last year and they got some work to do. Uh, in that regard but they also you know they it's not just there's money coming from other spots you know I know like there was a deal for the basketball players that didn't have anything to do with one Arkansas where they you know were able to build in you know quite a bit of money for their players last year Um, you know there's uh, uh, the hunts you know for basketball also I mean the hunts don't have anything to do with one Arkansas previously or Arkansas edge that's a you know independent deal where they provide a lot of support for Arkansas basketball uh, and NIL so there's a lot of other things like that but you know they get money from corporate sponsors um, they get money from donations but what they're trying to do is get that uh, get that money going for uh, for the their membership uh, program which I, I guess there's like I don't know what the perks are, but there's different perks and stuff like that. And I don't know if it's like meeting players or sideline passes or, or stuff like that. I'm sure that they'll put come out with some announcements like that. I was talking to Chris, too. Like, people are like, you know, they need to put QR codes. Um, somebody said Missouri has QR codes in front of the urinals. So you're just like, why are you, why are you taking a leak? That seems interesting. But, you know, maybe like on the chair – I think actually he said there's no place on Arkansas baseball chair backs to put a QR code. So maybe they they look at some other kind of way to do that. But I know that they're like, you know, just starting to get things going and uh, and get trying to get creative. So we'll see where where things go with that. Pittman – Sam Pittman said, you know, he's been very encouraged with it, with the direction of of Arkansas Edge too. So it's what it comes down to, so much of it. And I've said this before, you may not like the way things are – but it is the way things are. And if you want to compete, then, you know, in spite of Arkansas making $167 million in revenue last year, you got 50 bucks that you can chip in to, you know, help Arkansas get a new running back. Could you do it every month? You know, that's the question that we're having with fans now. <laughs> I mean, it seems ridiculous, but that's where things are. Whether you agree with how it's done or not, that's what – and NIL, too, it's like – I do like the way that, you know, from talking with Chris about how things are moving forward with, um, yeah, you know, this – it's not just about, like, putting some little tweet out, hey, you know, go get your deodorant from – this company you know it's about actually fulfilling obligations and tracking it and you know making sure it's done and then getting paid after those things are done Uh, because the current landscape of nil is just paying players i mean that's all that's that's what it is it's just paying players it's not about like man I, i want this guy to represent our clothing brand or our sports drink or our um body spray or whatever the kids are doing these days whatever it is you know that's not what you know that's what name image likeness is you know it's not just like this guy could really help us win some football games you know let's pull our money together and get him to Arkansas because that's what it really is right it's just it is but it's all a loophole it really is but that's the game. That's the game that it's uh, that's being played right now. All right, I'm going to check out see if I got some questions here on Hog Sports. Raw Hog says, Raw Hog, it's so early, but do you do you like do you feel like the O line has improved? Also, will you give us an end of spring assessment after it's over? Of course, you know I will, Raw Hog. You know I'm going to give you not just an end of spring assessment. I'm going to give you weekly assessments. I mean, you're going to get a lot of that. So uh, yes, I do feel like the offensive line has improved. Do I feel like it's the offensive line that Oklahoma has or Texas has? No, I don't. I don't feel like it's like that. Do I feel like it's moved in the right direction? Yes. But I don't know that you're going to look out there and say, like, man, that looks like that looks like what Alabama's got or something like that. I don't think that. But I do think it's better. And I don't know that it necessarily has to be an offensive line that's full of, like, you know, 
future NFL players, yeah, it'd be good if some of them were like, you know, NFL guys or borderline NFL guys. And maybe Fernando Carmona has that kind of potential. But um, – because you can, and we've seen Arkansas do good things with a pretty good offensive line. That's maybe not just a great offensive line. We've seen them do things like that. Uh, so, but yes, I do feel like it's moving in the right direction. I think they got some better players. I think they need a couple more players. Branson Hickman would be a guy to keep an eye on out of SMU. Based on where the overall programs are right now, this is from Junkyard Hog. Based on where the overall programs are right now, are you hopeful in all three ma- men's major sports that we'll see? a product we can be proud of. Um, well, I mean, based on experience with Eric Musselman in the past, I think that he'll get the basketball team in the right direction. I mean, that's just based on two elite eights and a sweet 16 before this past year. I know it's a what have you done for me lately world. Uh, football, I would be least convinced. Baseball, obviously, you know, is strong. Uh, but football, I would be – least convinced based on you know kind of a downward trajectory that it's had Uh, although I'm really intrigued with Taylor Green and Bobby Petrino and I think if the defense can be what it was the first three quarters of the season I know I'm repeating myself because I say that all the time if it can be that and then you know the offense can get to clicking again then I think they can be better I think they should be better than they were last year I think they had the chance to have a better roster overall than they had last year um if they get a couple more defensive tackles, and that's something Pittman has told me um, in his last press conference. They want a couple of defensive tackles. They've been lucky to get a couple of defensive tackles in the late period pretty much every year, so maybe that will continue. Uh, last year was about as deep as a defensive line as I think I can ever remember them having. I mean, a solid three deep at end and tackle. So, yes, basketball – Baseball, I think you can be proud of the direction of those. And football, I'm just still very much wait and see. I mean, I get excited about football because it is my favorite sport. Uh, And, you know, I think people probably hear that in my voice sometimes, like, you know, maybe think I'm talking them up or something more than I I really am. I just get excited about football. And, you know, I talk about Arkansas relative to to Arkansas in the past because you just in this day and age, you just don't know as much about what somebody else has because things turn over so quickly. G.B. Baber says, what really is going on with Kate Middleton? I hope she's okay. That's You certainly wouldn't wish that on anybody. Mike R.Z. says, where do fans need to focus in order to feel validated on the football team one way or the other? Where do they need to focus? W's and L's is what I would say. Wins. Going into the 2014 season, it felt very – this is a long one, Mike RZ. Going into the 2014 season, it felt very obvious that week two in Lubbock was going to be a huge game in terms of proof of concept for Bielman and the culture he wanted to establish. The Hogs went in, dominated. Yes, they did. I was there. And set the tone for the season of being an uber-physical team that could run the damn ball any way they wanted. I'm getting that sense in week two, and still water carries a similar weight. That's what I started thinking of, Mike, when you started writing that or when I started reading that. If the Hawks can establish their will against the Pokes and come out with a solid win, let's say two possessions, then it feels like we have the proof of concept we need. That would provide a big – let's see if you got anything else. Um, it feels like uh, for a long – is that a fair exp- – I think that's a great um, comparison, Mike. I really do. I think that if you get Arkansas going down to Stillwater, over to Stillwater, and um, – my dad always gets upset with me when I say down somewhere that's not down. He says that you always get, you say you say you say back, back east and out west, up north, down south. And he's right. Anyway, yes, Stillwater game I think is very comparable in a lot of ways to that Texas Tech game, although Texas Tech wasn't uh, really that good. It's kind of wild to think about Texas Tech. They had Baker Mayfield on that team that Arkansas played in 2014, and then the next year they got Pat Mahomes starting at quarterback. <laughs> I don't, Baker didn't start that game. It was the other guy. They had another guy starting above Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Wild. Ventrosity says, have you noticed a difference at practice compared to last year? I definitely have on offense. When looking at how practices went 21 versus 23, are the 24 practices closer to the energy of 21 stressful, successful season or 23? I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. In 23 spring, like, they were throwing the ball all over the field, utilizing the middle of the field, all over the place. And I'm like, okay, this offense is going to be fine. 
They're utilizing the field. They're throwing the ball. Isaiah Satania was a superstar that spring. And then you get the season is just like, oh, pack it in. Limit the playbook. Focus on what you can do well. You know, when you start hearing that talk, anytime you hear a coach say something like, uh, well, we just need to limit what we do offensively and simplify things, and it's just like, it's over. It's done. Whenever you hear a coach says that, uh, say that. So, um, but no, I mean, like, I'll, I'll say this. Bobby Petrino in that last practice when they were live tackle was old Bobby Petrino. I mean, everybody been talking about, like, oh, he's calmed down. He's just enjoying football now. He's just calling plays. No. Nah. <laughs> he was getting in people's ass. <laughs> I mean, he was. Get lined up. Do your job. You know, you hear all that kind of stuff. That's old Bobby. Huddle. Get in the huddle. And he's just intense, man. I mean, that's just Bobby Petrino. Now, he's not out there like dog cussing people. And there's, I think there's stuff embellished like about Bobby Petrino's past that he's out there calling people, you know, MFers and all this kind of stuff. And that just wasn't necessarily the case. I'm not saying he was like model citizen or anything, but the things that I always noticed about Petrino was he was just getting after people. I'll never forget Paul Petrino, uh, Arkansas's first practice I remember seeing out there. Uh, and I think they practiced in the stadium. And, man, he was just getting after them. I mean, they were just on those guys' butts like I had never seen before. And Paul Petrino's chasing down wide receivers, you know. That's what I remember. And that's kind of what, like, it took me back, you know, a little bit. But he's not, like, degrading anybody out there. He's just getting after them, you know. And you see Pittman more working with the offensive linemen than, than what we saw this time last year. Him and Mateo's kind of tag team in that. And I think they're just able to do that a little more because Petrino's going to have his finger on everything uh, with the offense, especially skill guys. Uh, Tuscalore says, what returning football player makes the biggest jump from last year? Well, I said this on the last walk and talk I did, but I think Davion Dozier is going to be hard to keep off the field. I mean, he had a really impressive catch. If you've been on Twitter and whatnot, you've seen the catch, but I, I watched it live, obviously. So, uh, what's, what's this? Oh, Michi, Michi Johnson will enter the transfer portal, South Carolina. That's big. Hmm. So, um, anyway, uh, I would say Davion Dozier, I think, has a chance to make a big jump. I would think Isaiah Satane, you know, he's thickened up a little bit too. I, I think that he's got a shot to make a decent jump. Uh, Tyrone Broden is another. So, maybe maybe I'll just say one of those wide receivers. But I really like what I see out of Davion Dozier. I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, he's got the size, speed, great hands. I mean, he's making impressive catches. Uh, I like what I see out of Broden so far. Maybe Isaac Tesla would be another guy who tests off the charts. You know, people say, you know, Isaac Tesla is not fast enough. Well, I mean, and it's it, people get confused on this because it's no pads, but, you know, he's like 22 miles an hour speed. He's got a 10 5 broad jump, 38 inch vertical. Like these are all impressive numbers, like testing numbers. But I think he was really misused. And, and Broden, too, Broden averaged like nine yards a catch, maybe less than that last year. And, you know, the guy's six seven and super fast. So, you know, maybe we could see a big jump for him. But I would say um, if I'm picking a guy, maybe I say Dozier. I just think that, like, coming from a guy that was a true freshman who didn't really play much uh, to a guy who could really impact him next year um, and maybe be a surprise guy because the guy, you know, not talking about a whole lot. And the defensive side of the ball, you know, Quincy Rhodes jumps out to me, Andrew Ford, um Brad Spence, I think, has a, has potential to be a, a really good player for him, too. So maybe Brad Spence on defense since he is an emerging guy and Davion Dozier on offense. Excuse me. Most improved position group and position group that takes the biggest step back. Linebacker is a candidate, even though I named Brad Spence as a possibility. I just think they need more depth there. They need a veteran guy. And I brought that up to Sam Pittman, and I was just, and he kind of described a guy, and I was like, you mean like an Antonio Greer? And he's like, exactly. But a guy that's got some veteranness about him, a guy that maybe was a all AAC player like he was, um, who had 85 tackles in a year, you know, something like that. A guy that's just been a little bit, um, you know, more veteran. So linebacker has the potential. I mean, defensive line guys, as much as I like, they're too deep, and I like it fine, uh, especially defensive tackle, but. You know, you get an injury here and there. 
and you don't get somebody out of the transfer portal, that could be a little bit of an issue, you know. I mean, last year they had injuries on the, at defensive tackle last year all year, but you didn't never notice it because they were so deep. So, um, I might say linebacker position that takes a step back. Hmm. Maybe linebacker. Maybe defensive tackle could take a step back if they like were to have an injury or something and don't address it. But those are two position groups that I also, also think they need to address in the portal. Most improved position group. Hmm. Well, I think offensive line will be markedly improved, but they could still be bad and make a lot of improvement <laughs> based on how they played last year. Tight end, I think, is a possibility, too, because you've got Luke Haz coming back. I think Andreas Puska is going to be – it's Puska. It looks like Paskey, but it's Puska. I think he's going to be a nice impact player. I think Varquez Gums looks so much more comfortable than he did last year uh, when he arrived in fall camp. He just looks so much better than he did. Uh, I did. I just did not think that the tight ends blocked very well at all, especially when you lose Luke Haz and then Tyrus Washington, who – is supposed to be back out there on Tuesday, who's been out. So I think they're, that tight end could be a really improved position group. Um, and offensive line also. And biggest step back, maybe I'll go with uh, maybe I'll go with linebacker, although I have some hopes for linebacker. But I, I, don't like, I don't like the numbers at linebacker right now. The numbers are actually good. They've got plenty of scholarship players. They're good. But I don't like – Seven of the nine guys, when Wyatt Simmons and uh, Bradley Shaw come in, the two freshmen who aren't enrolled yet, seven of the nine guys are first- or second-year players. And the two older players are Caden Henley, who hasn't played – he hasn't played a snap. Uh, and he's a redshirt sophomore. And then Xavier Sori, who transferred from Georgia, had 19 tackles for him last year. So, I mean, I, I think they have a chance to be good, but I also thought that maybe there was a chance the offensive line could be good. You know, there's some hope there. And we want to get away from hope. That's the thing about the transfer portal. You can get away from hope. You don't need hope. You can just go out and address. Teams right now are built a lot differently than they were five years ago. People have heard me say that. Like, you know, this team would have taken, you know, a team, you know, and basically for everybody, like would have taken their same team from five years earlier in a lot of cases. I mean, there's programs like Georgia and stuff that, you know, don't rely as much on the transfer portal as some others do. They just do it through recruiting. But, like, a lot of the teams out there, like middle-tier, lower-tier programs, um, you, you line them up against, you know, a good team that they had five, six, seven years ago, and these teams would beat them because they're not relying on a true freshman for depth. Um, it used to be okay to have uh, – you know, you had a two deep at the defensive line. You're like, hey, that's pretty good. They got a two deep. And now you can easily – you can definitely – not easily. It's hard to go get those players. Don't misunderstand me. But you can go out and get a three deep, like they had last year on the defensive line. They had a quality three deep on the defensive line. Um, there's no need now to say, okay, you know, our third team guys are freshmen. And that's kind of where they are right now on defensive end. They're talented, Charleston Collin, KV on Henderson. But they're still freshmen. And freshman defensive ends get buckled by running backs and offensive tackles in the run game. They just do. You know, they're in most cases they're going to be situational guys. Um, but I think Charles Collins, KV, and Henderson have bright futures, but there's also room for maybe somebody who's a little more veteran there. Uh, MHM Ho Hottage 20 pretty much asked the same question. What position group are you most concerned about? I think I pretty much answered that. All right, everybody. Hope we had a good show today. I think we covered a lot of stuff. We certainly had a lot of people watching today. Let's see if there's anything that jumps out here in the chat. We're almost at an hour, so. Um, I don't see anything that just jumps out too much. Appreciate some of the kind words. Yeah. Uh, Todd P says, Trey, football looking better for real or no? I think they're looking better, but I'm not saying that means they're going to go out and win eight games. You know, I think that Pittman needs to win next year. I don't know that, like, just sliding into a bowl game is quite going to cut it. Yeah. All right, everybody. We uh, we endured some bad news during the uh, 
during the show with Carrius Kern decommitting. We covered NIL. We set the record straight on Arkansas basketball. And I think we did what we were supposed to do today. This is why we have the show to inform. Go sign up at Hog Sports, guys. It's a dollar right now for your first month at HAWGsports.com. I'm like, why are you not subscribed to Hog Sports? Like, if you wanted all this stuff a couple weeks ago or all last week and stuff, then, you know, engage on our message board. One of the most active message boards in the entire country, the Razor's Edge Premium Forum. Go check us out over there. Check out all the things that we've got to offer at Hog Sports, our content, all the recruiting information, crystal ball features. Um, it's a lot. And we offer it for a dollar for the first month because that's how we get you. We get you through the door. You think you've got everything. You know, you're going scouring the Internet, combing through all the crap. You know, we used to cut through the crap for you, but now you've got social media, Twitter, and all that stuff, and it's great. And I don't put all our stuff out on Twitter because I don't work for Twitter. I don't work for Elon Musk. Uh, but we put out our free stuff on on Twitter. But, like, if you want all of our inside analysis and VIP content, then go check us out at hawgsports.com. $1 for the first month. That's how we get you. Stop sifting through all the trash out there and go check us out at Hog Sports. All right, everybody. I think we did it. Thanks to Danny West for hopping on to it, hopping on with us, um, even though he had uh, disappointing news. Did the newsletter go out? Yep. Marion Arc, four star lineman, Karius Kern is decommitted from the Razorback. You guys go check out um, the newsletter, uh, Hog Sport, or not the newsletter, but the uh, the text alerts at Hog Sports. Uh, you can go. Let me tell you where to go real quick. It's a free service that we offer. Okay. And we're not going to spam you with a bunch of stuff. We're just going to put breaking news. We'll link back to the article. It's just going to be breaking news. So you go to Hog Sports. If you're on desktop, let's see if we're on mobile. Because I think it's like 75% of you guys are on mobile. But you go to Hog Sports and you just scroll down. Scroll down to the page and you'll see where it says, um, well, there's a newsletter. And where are text alerts? Because I'm not seeing it on my phone. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's under Quick Links. So if you scroll down to the right under Quick Links, uh, you'll see Breaking News Text Alerts. And you can just go there and you enter your phone number, and we're going to send you Breaking News Text Alerts so you can know for your buddy. Pretty good deal. And right below that on Quick Links is Arkansas Daily Email Newsletter. So on newsletter, we're going to send mostly free content. And free content for us is like stuff that comes out of press conferences, you know, a schedule release, stuff that other sites are going to have also. We're just going to take a piece of that. Maybe you, maybe there will be an ad just like anywhere else on the page, and, um, you know, you get to read the article. So, uh, But we're going to send most of our free stuff. We might sprinkle in a couple of clearly marked VIP content uh, in with that newsletter, but that will just go to your email inbox. We usually send one out every morning, and along with breaking news, if there's breaking news, then we'll send a newsletter out with that. But uh, also the text alerts. I mean, that's just, just a great feature. Like, you should have the text alerts. It's an easy, free feature that we offer. Um, we're just going to put, like, the headline of what happened and link back to the article. You click it, and boom, you're at the article. We're not going to spam you with a bunch of stuff, so don't worry about that. You're not going to get, like, advertisements or stuff like that. You're just going to get – hog sports news fair fair go sign up for that sign up for a dollar for first month at hog sports h-a-w-g sports.com all right everybody thanks to danny west for hopping on appreciate all you guys and your questions thanks to our vip subscribers and thanks to our free users too couldn't do it without you either all right everybody this has been trey biddy with hog sports.com and we'll catch you next time <laughs>